A few months ago, a friend came up to me and he asked, Eric, do you think it's possible to build a personality test with 100% accuracy? And I thought to myself, <laughs> uh, getting nervous, heart beating, uh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, uh, that sounds very difficult. Uh, but now I'm starting to feel that maybe, maybe that is possible. I mean, it's an ideal, it's a dream, it's a utopia, but maybe some dreams, maybe some utopias are possible and maybe this one in particular is. Uh, so what I've been doing is I've been slowly rolling out the autumn update of my personality test and this one comes with a drastic and radical new approach to figuring out your personality test and I've devised a series of uh, methods to eliminate subjectivity and bias when it comes down to personality testing and profiling. Now, if you look at the online world of personality tests, most personality tests use the exact same approach. They focus on the dichotomies. Either you're introverted or you're extroverted. Either you prefer to be alone or you prefer to be with people. Either you are shy or you are outgoing. And your answer on these scales will determine your personality type. Your personality type is a combination of these answers. Introversion plus intuition plus feeling plus perceiving equaling the INFP personality type. Only a few personality tests out there have been able to build functional cognitive function tests. Cognitive function tests measuring instead of your answer on these uh, dichotomies, your inner thought patterns, how you think, what values you have, how you process information, how you perceive the world. And while these tests are more accurate than the dichotomy tests, they are not near a level where they can be considered consistent or statistically valid or significant. The problem with the dichotomy tests was clear from the beginning. No person is truly introverted or extroverted. Most people are somewhere in between. Most people, a true introvert, a true extrovert in Carl Jung's own terms, would be a person who belongs in the lunatic asylum. You know, most people are a mix of these traits, a complex mix, a unique mix of these traits. And that's why Carl Jung proposed the cognitive function approach. The cognitive function approach, it's superior to the dichotomy approach in the sense that it manages to explore instead different factors of introversion, different sides of introversion. Introversion is an umbrella term, it's not a personality trait. It's an umbrella term for multiple different forms of personality traits. For example, it's a factor of how reserved you are, it's a factor of how outgoing you are, it's a factor of how shy you are, it's a factor of how much you value alone time, how private you tend to be about yourself and your own thoughts and feelings, how introspective you are. It, basically measures up a bunch of different things all together and that's why it's so hard to say and answer this question so clearly. The answer on most introverted and extroverted tests is the same. It depends. It varies. I like being around people if we discuss ideas because I'm an intuitive but I don't like being around people when it's just uh, about small talk and the same thing over and over and the same people and the same discussions. I get bored by repetition. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the problem with basically all personality tests or 90% of all personality tests online. We are not so easy to place and uh, we don't fall so easily on either scale. So for in the past few years, my test has been a classic cognitive function test that gives you a personality type based on a weighed assumption or based on your answers on these different cognitive functions. So a person who tests high for NI, an FI, an FJ, an NJ, S, an INFJ. A person who tests high for SCE, for TE, for TP, and for SJ is an ESTP or ESTJ. So it depends really on how strong you test or answer on these different questions. So on where you place yourself and where you fall on a scale. Now what I've come to develop is a double cognitive function approach. Rather than the classic cognitive function approach, I've come up with a double cognitive function approach. 
So the problem I saw with the cognitive function approach was that most people will struggle to interpret individual cognitive functions. In what situations am I private? In what situations am I more open with myself? In what situation can I be more shy? In what situations am I more outgoing? A lot of time it depends on a combination of factors and your shyness is only as strong as your other factors and personality traits. Your honesty is constantly balanced against other factors inside your personality. Most people are not one singular personality trait or cognitive function. Most people are a complex network and connection of multiple personality traits. Rather, I work with four traits that all have to coexist and work together. The double cognitive function approach basically asks a question which factors in two cognitive functions at once. So NI together with FI, NI together with TI rather than NI alone and FI alone and TI alone. What I do with this is I create an answer that a test that is easier to answer for an INTJ as opposed to an INFJ. An INFJ will place themselves an answer and relate differently to introverted intuition depending on how it's described. And INFJs often don't relate to or use introverted intuition with the same purpose an INTJ would, and often don't even talk about it in the same way. Based on interviews and coaching I've had with you guys, I notice INTJs experience introverted intuition very differently from INFJs. So a test has to be smart enough to see past that and connect and understand that and place that the right way. Another cool thing about my personal test is the tri tri triangulating, <laughs> triangulating test format that I developed to figure out your personal type. So what happens with my test is you fall on an end of three scales. You are a combination of three neighboring types as one. So to explain that in simpler terms, the INFX, the NIFI personality type, has traits that border on and can appear like SI and FI, or for example, NE and FE. NI and FI can also resemble somewhat NI and TI. So a lot of the time, an NI and FI type might somewhat agree or agree with statements that an INTJ would put, or an ENFP would put, or an ISF. P would put. So to understand that an INFJ or an INFP has to be somebody who borders these three types. An NIFI type has to be a person who borders on and can sometimes appear like an SIFI type or an NITI type or an NEFE type. So using that bias in the human mind to my advantage, what I did was I simply weighed up all those answers together. So an INFP who answers agree or somewhat agree to I, SI and FI will get a stronger likelihood of testing and getting the result INFJ in the end. And this, these two things will not be um, held separate from each other. So they will be all factored in and you will be the type in the middle. The cool thing about this approach is it resembles how I type people in real life too. When I type a person, I come up with and I form a triangle. Basically, what I do is I see three bordering types that you resemble. Either you're this type or that type or that type. So what I do is I identify which types you are in the intersection with. And this is my first assumption. This is when I start to understand the person, when I start to listen to them. You could either be an INTJ, an INTP, or an INFP. And most of the time, the answer is the one in the middle, the INTP. So if I can see that you have resemblances or similarities with these three types or an additional fourth type, that can help me verify and strengthen your read and it can help me figure out, oh yeah, if you are between those scales, then you must have this scale and then you must be this type. And that's approach, uh, that approach seems to be working really effectively in my personality test too. I also you consider the polar opposite factor. And the polar opposites are personality types that op occupy the opposite ends of a scale. So if we have INFX or NIFI types on the strongly agree spectrum on a question, we will 
undoubtedly have SC and TE types on the disagree side of the spectrum. Now, you'll have a bunch of types that appear somewhere in the middle. So there will be ENFXs, ISFXs, INTXs, ESFXs, ISTXs, or ENTXs. They'll all be somewhere around this end, and you can factor those things in and those types in to get an answer and an assessment to help you figure out your personality type. Another thing I'm really happy with is the dynamic dichotomy approach rather than the traditional dichotomy approach. So for me, introversion can be a multiple combination of different factors. In total, I've identified six different factors of introversion, six different factors of intuition, six different factors of judging. So a person, a judging type might have some of these, but not all of these. And these things will naturally bring up type doubts. If you have a judging question answering asking how organized you are as an INFJ, you might say, oh, I'm not very organized. But if you're asked how loyal you are or how focused you can be, then it's much easier to answer correctly. So you have to figure out which traits you are high on and which ones are strong on and which traits are your judging traits, which traits are your feeling traits, which traits are your intuition traits, which traits are your introversion traits. And I have some videos out on this topic that will raise some really interesting questions about this very topic. What I'm always trying to do is figure out and use human bias to my advantage. People have always said it's impossible to build a functional personality test because people are too biased to answer it correctly. But if you can work with human bias rather than against it, you can use it to your advantage to get people to get the result they deserve, which is their flow type test. Uh, what I have to do is I have to really use rhetoric and my experiences in communication to assess strategically how different types will respond to different questions. I have to test every question against every type to make sure that it will perform the way I want it to. I have to make sure I use the right terms and values and that these terms are used and understood correctly. And I have to make sure I give people the right context. A personnel test missing context is going to cause people to answer incorrectly way too often. And you, there's way too many personnel tests out there that make this mistake. They ignore context. They say, do you like to be around people or do you prefer to be by yourself? And they ignore context, which is which people, why, for what reason, in what situation and when. What I contextualize everything against is flow, and uh, flow has become the concept that has come to dominate my project. Who are you in flow, as in who are against are you <laughs> when you are stressed? Who are you in flow versus who you are under stress? So my personal test, focusing on the positive flow, will ask you questions to figure out what you really enjoy, what you really value, what you really like, what really interests you, what you really, really find to be you. And in doing so, it gives the right definition of what you is. I mean, most personal tests ignore this question. What is you? Who are you? What the makes, what decides who you are and what your identity is? I mean, you can answer this so differently based on what perspective you have. I mean, people who don't like you will give a completely different uh, biased explanation of who you are, focusing on negative variations of your personal tra traits rather than your positive, focusing on what you lack rather than what you possess. People who like you will focus on what you like. And the question is, am I over glamorifying myself? Am I uh, answering based on who I wish I was rather than who I was? Am I answering based on uh, who I am right now or who I am at my best? Do I have a depression right now or am I stressed? And is that uh, factoring into my answers? I mean, some people, they just can't answer a question because they're too unhealthy, too uh, depressed, too uh, caught up in a routine or in a situation they don't like, living a life they don't enjoy. And I mean then I think it's quite refreshing to have a personality test that factors in on the important. What would I do if I did what I enjoyed? What would I really like? What would I really want? What would I really prefer if I could choose for myself? <laughs> the most annoying thing about my approach is 
Can we live the life we want to? Can we have meaning? Can we do what we wish for ourselves? Or do we have to compromise? Do we have to fit in the rat race? Do we have to adjust? Do we have to compromise? Do we have to fit in? Can we stand out? Do we have permission to stand out? Will we keep our jobs and our salary if we do? Can we make it doing what we love? And yeah, that's the question of the century. That's uh, the million dollar question. And uh, that's why we're all here probably watching this video because we want the answer to that particular really annoying question of uh, dealing with your parents' expectations on you, work, career, studies, and the stressors of real life, of moving, of finding a place to live, of uh, paying your rent and your bills, and at the same time finding a way to be happy and in love and living the way you want to, doing the things you love. I mean, um, I think way too many people live uh, lives without meaning, doing things they don't enjoy in order to survive. And uh, are we a survival society? Is this a society that is harsh? Is this a society that is difficult? Is this a society that lacks money, resources, potential, possibilities? Is this a life that lacks meaning or possibilities or opportunities? Is this a world that's badly fit for your personal type? Is this a world that uh, is against you? I mean, uh, yeah, I guess that's why I make personnel tests and why I make videos to figure out the answer to those questions. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.